Hey, George, you think it's a weird idea if I just add a bunch of stuff to the genetic makeup of the human race? Yeah, I thought so too, to heck with them! <laughs> Hello, my friends. Jacob is here once again. Happy Monday to you. I'm glad you stopped by, that you press play, and that you're spending a little time with me. Because today, we're talking about some duck. Frankenstein stuff. That's right. Yeah, NASA. They created something that they shouldn't have created. They meddled where they shouldn't have meddled. Uranus. And now you're gonna find out what it all means. So I hope you buckled up, people. All right, you saw the title, right? You saw the thumbnail, got you here. And if you're new to the channel, do please subscribe. You know, I don't know, I'm pointing there. I don't know where to subscribe is. Point, you know, click on it, become a, become a family member or a friend or whatever, you know, a visitor, I don't care. I'm just glad that you're here and I hope that you stick around. It's important. Make sure you share and you like and you do all that stuff too. It's great. Hey, so the uh, thumbnail got you in there, right? A little curious about what was NASA doing, tinkering around with the genetic makeup of all life that we know it. It's, uh, it's not very smart, it's not, not very smart indeed. Reminds me of a movie, okay? I saw this movie on Netflix. It's uh, called Titan. Starring Sam Worthing. Not a great movie, not a great movie. Basically, the Earth, you know, it's in the future a little bit, and the resources are crumbling, you know, the world. So they're looking outside to a planet called Titan. Not really a planet, it was one of Jupiter's moons. But there is theorized that, you know, you could basically live there if you tinkered with the genetic makeup of the human being, which they did in the lab. They had all these real tough Marines and these, you know, go-getters come in and, and then they basically, they changed their DNA. They're, and then they turned out to be like murderous monsters. It was pretty spooky, right? So uh, I'm watching this and I'm thinking, nah, not in my lifetime, nah. <laughs> well, guess what? It's, uh, NASA has decided to tinker around and, um, and they did it. They created a DNA molecule uh, that has like double the information, yeah, than ours. That's right. This isn't the first time that this has happened, okay? So look, uh, let me give you a little history lesson. Biology 101, right? One of the first things you learn is that the genetic uh, code, it consists of three letters. The letters are A, T, C, and G. Now, each of those represent a chemical building block that then you know, helps to create life and everything that we know, everything, right? It's all connected there. Now, because of these letters and the arrangement of such, it allows the molecules to encode a great deal of information. Information that then dictates whether we have this color eye or that color eye or pretty much everything. Now, imagine, imagine, right? Because you only have this certain amount of information to work with. Imagine you can add a couple more letters. A little good analogy, right? A good analogy would be, say, you're playing Scrabble and you get the alphabet, right? Now they add, say, another, I don't know, they give you double the amount of letters, double, new letters that you never worked with before. So imagine the words that you could come up with. Imagine the world you could come up with. Imagine the superpowers that you could get if you had more information to work with. So let me read this. Let me read this to you because this is a real thing. Okay, NASA funded research creates DNA uh, molecule to aid in the search for alien life. They're doing this because they decided that this would be helpful, right? And it proves now that life can exist here and it can have alien DNA inserted in. Stuff that doesn't belong there. And now they have it up and running. 
and, uh, and it's capable of storing information. It is capable of then creating a new form of life. Although they're not saying that it is new life, but it, is, uh, it would have a lot more to work with than us, right? So this is smart, smart thinking. I mean, maybe it is, I don't know. I, I just like to, uh, I see movies like Titan and I think probably not a good idea. You know, probably not a good idea. In this research breakthrough funded by NASA scientists have synthesized a molecular system that DNA, like DNA, can store or transmit information. This unprecedented feature suggests that it could be an alternative to DNA-based life, another kind of life. That's, that's, right? It's, it's, it's Frankenstein, right? I'm not joking, right? Am I joking? To life, my monster! Got the life! Yeah. <laughs> a, a new system, a new genetic system that can exist now. That's right. It has like double the amount. So instead of those four letters that I told you about, they got eight letters, eight letters to work with. They call it Hachi, which means eight. Moji, which means letter, right? Hachi Moji. That's what they're calling this thing. It even has a Wikipedia page now. Lori Glaze, the acting director of NASA's Planetary Science Division says, life detection is increasingly important goal of NASA's planetary science missions. And this new work will help us to develop effective instruments and experiments. Experiments. And experiments. Are they gonna do experiments on people to see if they can live on other planets? Like, uh, like Sam Worthington, Mr. Uh, Mr. Avatar turned into a uh, monster. I don't know. So they're, they're, they're thinking that, you know, other aliens, they may have a different uh, genetic makeup. So we might as well, you know, let's create aliens here. Let's create alien DNA here. So then we can better understand alien life on other planets from what we know. This sounds great, right? The synthetic DNA includes the four nucleotides, all those letters I was telling you about, but also four others that mimic the structures of informational ingredients that are irregular uh, to DNA. They're different. The result is a double helix structure that can store and transfer information. That's big. That's big. Stephen Banner and his team, they were working on this the, uh, with, uh, in collaboration with the University in Texas in Austin, Indiana University Medical School in Indianapolis, and DNA Software in Ann Arbor, Michigan. They all worked together and they dubbed this, as I said, Hashimoji. Isn't that funny? I just did the emoji movie with the demons, the spooky monsters. I'm not saying they're creating spooky monsters, but it sounds like Dr. Frankenstein. A little bit, a little bit. Scientists have much more to do on the question of what other genetic systems could serve as the foundation for life and where such exotic organisms could be found. However, the study opens the door to further research on ways life could structure itself in environments that we consider inhospitable, like Titan. You see what I mean? It's called pre predictive programming. That's what it's called. You, you ever hear of it? They do these movies, these TV shows, and they everything, and they get you ready because it's, they're already doing it. Because, you know, the truth is, back in 2012, they did this too. Could you imagine what you could do if you had more information to work with? Hmm, I wonder. I guess we're gonna find out from NASA. And I'm glad that you're here. I'm trying to keep this one short today. I hope that um, it meant something to you. I hope that you're, uh, you know, not too concerned about NASA's Dr. Frankenstein project that they just concluded and is now very successful, which I'm sure you're going to hear about. It. I'm surprised other people haven't gotten on it, but it's, uh, it's weird. It's weird. And I love each and every one of you. I hope you do subscribe. I hope you share it around, check the bell and do all that stuff. And I'll see you again very, very shortly. Maybe not this Tuesday, but soon after that. Love each and every one of you. And I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.